Hey everyone, it's Joe Dibley from Brock Off Inc. and I am so excited today uh, for the 12 for 12, we're doing a training. We've begun these training sessions to help move you forward because I know sometimes you can't attend events and you need to have access, you need to understand who's out there who can help you move your business forward. And uh, you know, one day I was talking to Colleen Hyrath and watching her go through her transformation and what she's been doing there's been a consistency right from day one when she spoke to now where she's dominating that um, sort of area in terms of when she speaks, she enrolls people. But let me tell you a little bit more about why this is so critical. First of all, with tw as a 12 for 12 member, you can get on the stage simply by applying to speak in a certain city. What that means though is I have to look and see, you know, what do we have going? And we always have to serve life, love, and business. So if we're focused on, uh, you know, those three areas, obviously we're going to be pulling speakers from those three, let's say, genres. That being said, of course, depending on when people apply, there might be more people applying on the life side, the business side. So I have to filter it down the line. And we use a flow system that I've developed over the last 13 years to make sure we're putting people in the right place so they can shine. There's definitely a theme to every single one of our events. But... You know, the critical component is that it has to meet those three criteria. It doesn't mean each speaker has to, but the actual flow of the event must address all of those. So now let's say you've gotten on a stage. That's awesome, whether it's this stage or another stage or your own stage for that matter. The biggest obstacle that I am seeing and continue to see across the board is I've gotten onto the stage, I've done all this work, there's all this prep work, like, you know, whether you're gonna, you know, what are you gonna talk about? How are you gonna deliver? How are you gonna engage? What's your offer? How are you gonna work with them after the fact? How are you gonna work with them pre the event? How are you going to be when you get on that stage? And how are you going to enroll those who need you? Now, when we talk about enrollment, we're talking about sales. So we're talking about engagement and also service. So for some people, it's really an icky thing to have to make that transition. They've been delivering, delivering, delivering. And what ends up happening is instead of strategically delivering, and this is where Colleen is masterful, instead of strategically delivering, what they do is they deliver kind of a wheelbarrow full of deliciousness, except one, it's overwhelming, and two, I don't know how to work with you further. And then this offer thing comes out and it just feels like I calling she said it, it feels weird. It's, and people call it salesy, but it feels out of congruency because here you've been in service and then you look to this. Well, there's a trick to doing this. And I don't mean trick as in trick someone. There is a technique and a strategy in terms of moving people. Uh, my closing, rate we're just going to talk sales right now my closing rate is very high uh, now there's a couple of reasons for that for me one i have a book so a book is an easy purchase a very low cost investment if a person can't afford to purchase frock cost for example at twenty dollars they're probably not going to be a future customer it's not that i don't care about them it's that i have to invest my time where i can so if they can't afford the twenty dollars and i've made the you know i've made the compelling reason why they probably want to read the book then that's okay. I don't take it personally. I just move on. It's all good. Whatever. You know, I can't serve everyone and not everyone even will be attracted or drawn to me. Although I don't know why. But that being said, um, here's the bottom line though, is if I'm coming in only at say 497 or to even 197, if I haven't been able to seed, which Colleen's going to talk more, and I don't want to take anything away from what she's going to deliver today. If I haven't been able to seed properly, then I will not enroll those people because they, there's not enough compelling reason. You know, when people say it's the price, it's never the price. Now, that being said, unless you were talking to someone who was destitute, that's the only reason it would ever be the price. If that person's sitting in that room and they're listening to you, it, they may have budgetary issues that have, you know, they have to stretch it out, but they'll find a way to work with you if it's compelling enough. So this isn't about, you know, like manipulating, cajoling or whatever people into doing business with you. It's about finding a way to use your stage time at most effectively because what I've seen with Colleen, and I just, I marvel at this because the first time I saw her speak, she had a table rush. That was her very first time. Now, I've seen that with other people, 
but it hasn't been consistent. So there'll be people that do a table rush, and then they then it's like, oh wow, it was a great story, and Colleen has a very compelling story. So that first time, she did all the elements, and I'll let you talk about this in a minute, Colleen. But I don't even know that Colleen actually knew, but she'd been around it for so long and doing this for so long. So it was somewhat natural to her. Then when she decided to really get into the game and, and do all the things for herself and that she's going to be talking to you about and all the training, she's invested thousands and thousands of dollars to share what she's going to share. It really tr it transitions. The lowest close I've ever seen in close rate or the lowest interaction with Colleen is 50% of the room. Up the lowest. The highest I've seen, I believe, is around 85 to 90 percent. And she'll tell you. Let me tell you, the average speaker, it's two. If you hit 10 percent on a stage, you're considered to have done very well. I do much higher than that myself. But to watch Colleen do this consistently, I wanted her to share her understanding, her knowledge, and her training because that is what's going to help you. If you get on a stage, the last thing you want to do is lose that opportunity to at least move them forward to your database. If that's your main goal, if that's your main goal, then that should be the whole room, unless, again, unless it's a direct conflict with what you're doing. So without further ado, because I don't need to keep talking about the rah-rah, but hear me out. If you get on a stage, you need to understand how to do this. It's critical. So Colleen, I'm going to hand off to you, and I would love you to start sharing. Open up that big brain of yours and start sharing the how, because, man, it's amazing to watch. So please take it away. Uh, thank you, Joe, and welcome to everyone. As Joe mentioned, um, it's a process, and telling and sharing your story. So we're going to really stand on the sharing the story part. Uh, it, it's a process. And... The first time I went on the stage was really expressing that story and in a way releasing that story from my body and my mind and my heart at that cellular level. So it looks the same as many people um, who I see doing that for the first, second, third, fourth time. It's just part of the process. For me then, I went and got um, really advanced storytelling training. And then when I was able to put that together with my own 30 years of strategic selling, um, I could then seed um, my story, my sub stories. I could back down the signature story to a more palatable place because it is a big story and many of us have big stories. But I've also seen people who have just a regular st story that they connect the audience to from their childhood. So we're gonna talk today in this time that we have, I'm gonna explain to you some of the elements of what I am talking about. Um, then I'm gonna dive in deep to a couple of those uh, places so that you can walk away um, being able to see some of the elements of what I'm doing, but also you can make some changes right away. And then you can also see if you want to go deeper, are you the person that wants to move to enrolling more people? Um, I do want to say you're either enrolling or de-enrolling from the front of the stage. As you well should, not everyone is your customer, so that's important. And we'll get into that in the right offer, right audience stage. So just from the beginning in that storytelling, you are co-creating with your audience. So there is a way of positioning your story, uh, whether it's, it's average and you're making it connect to the audience, or it's such a big story like mine that I had to learn how to um, locate you into my story. So that is a skill. Write that word down, locate. Okay. Then I needed to land into your life in, when you're in that room and write that word down, land. Those are two critical parts in, in talking about not just sharing your signature story, but co-creating with the audience. So right from the moment 
they are cheering for you. So write that down. You want them to cheer for you. They want, you want them to want you to win. Okay. So write that down. This is really, really important um, elements in doing that. Okay. So we're going to talk about what are some of the elements and then I'm going to dive in deep to a couple of them. So I'm about storytelling and then this behind the scenes training is about story selling. I will uh, go in a little bit deeper into the word I call seeding. Seeding your story so you're seeding the sale and it's about choosing the words that resonate with the audience that's in the room so you got to be in front of the right audience and it's even uh, as I said locating and landing with your audience it's about how you use the right adjectives a little segue on that is very important write this down in the signature story you got to allow the audience to have their emotion so you cannot be having the emotion in the front of the room that is one of the things that will tell you that you moved past standing in your story versus on it there's no way to do it except to go through it do those things get it uh, released from you at a cellular level but when it hits you that now you're ready to actually stand on it and your audience believes that um, you're going to move to higher close rate okay so then you learn how to see the right words through adjectives and normal descriptions of your big story or or whatever story I've seen financial planners do this talking about growing up in poverty and being trustworthy um, I'm going to be sharing um, the PowerPoint for this call you guys will get access to that and in there I put a case study of a really what would seem like a less dramatic story but it's done in the same way that I do my story okay uh, so seeding is a word I want you to write down seeding means harvesting right so you're gonna harvest if you seed right when we move to the offer it's a lot more comfortable right audience right offer critical so so how do I take something that and I've been market studying um, my own uh, closure rates my own way of telling the story the depthness I tell it and I had a great challenge uh, recently which is 10 minutes and what percentage yes what percentage could I close in 10 minutes I have had a 90% close rate on a 50 minute story 90% hear me clearly then I took the challenge on could uh, I set setting goals my intention very clear could I get 50% close rate out of 10 minutes so that's my goal I said it I achieved it um, this past weekend so why would I do that Oh, for a lot of reasons sometimes we only gonna have 10 minutes but you get very clear in how you're going to land locate seed and still never rush and so the best comp compliment I can get is I'm I'm in audiences now where people have seen me speak when I was at a different stage and the only thing I had to sell was the book and the table rush and so to hear people say so calm so deliberate I like the energy but what was that was giving the audience the ability to have their experience of my story you still need to be able to go to that place to pull in the emotion and then pull it back I know exactly it catches you off guard when you're well rehearsed and when you have imprinted the delivery of your story at a cellular level to allow yourself to have that emotion but not overtake it and I know exactly where that happened in the last 10, 10 minute story I delivered and it surprises me each time 
where I allow myself to do it. The audience fee feels it. But it is the professionalism, not the amateur delivery, the pro-mindedness of my speaker training and, and how important it is for me to serve you. It's very important that you connect to that authentic emotion in that moment, but I don't overtake it by being emotional about the delivery. So another thing, you must be happy about telling your story. You must show the audience that you have gratitude for the story, no matter what it is. They will feel it in different ways, and it comes across as that overused word, being authentic. But until you are so grateful, so just imagine, look me up if you don't know what my story is, to think that I have to be at that place of I am grateful I have this. I wouldn't be in front of you sharing the story, doing all the cool things, being all the cool people. I'd be doing something else. I'm grateful for my story, right? And, and it has to come across. So some of the other things I'd like to talk about is the, the five stages, and that's what we're going to get into in a minute here, of the story process from the front of the room. But there is also the off-stage closing process. You got the on stage making the offer, and that's what we're going to dive deep into today. But you also have the off stage closing. I do go through deal breakers. Um, big important thing for uh, speakers up there. It comes into micro body language, micro expression, change in voice tone, comes into telling rather than sharing. Uh, it, uh, no offense to teachers, but I don't want you telling. I don't want you doing the three-point speaker uh, things where you tell them what they're going to learn, you give them a snippet, you roll back in and tell them the three things they learned. Not happening. <laughs> Not happening. That's where you will de-enroll. So there's a big speaker deal breaker for all of you. Okay? But you can change your voice tone. So if you've come from that speaker training, um, um, all the from Dale Carnegie all up to uh, – uh, speaking behind a podium, uh, having that telling voice, because if we've been trainers or teachers, we have a different voice. You can uh, retrain yourself with some of these mindset pieces because when I started to speak, because of the, the drama of the story, my voice box closed and I couldn't get it to open. And I couldn't get, as soon as I started talking about my story, my voice got tiny, and, and so I had to get voice training uh, from, um, for me, from someone who was a Broadway actor and was, was um, Broadway was uh, telling their story, their one person Broadway show, so quite different than over dramatic Broadway, okay? Um, sales funnel, right offer, right audience. You can make a low offer um, if you know what the point of that is. Is it a way for you to connect? For me, a way to connect, also a way for me to also measure, um, was I speaking to the right audience? Did they get it? Are they willing to see the value of this really um, heart-centered um, gift I'm giving them? Then if you have a sales funnel, then you know how to enroll them later on. Do you need to give them a little appetizer of you? And then what does that, what, where does that go for you? So you need the sales funnel to be able to do the, you know, right offer, right audience, and write this down, one offer. I don't care if you're in a 50-minute presentation or a 10-minute. Do not tell them what's happening next you blow it out that way. One offer, okay? Um, if they're buying, you'll get a chance to make other offers. But if you go all the way through all your coaching programs up to your, you know, your bigger sales item, you lost them. So pick the right one based on the audience, one product offer. Okay, there's many other things in creating the signature story. Um, but I want to get into something that you probably hadn't heard of, sub-stories, okay? So your signature story, no matter whether it was 10 minutes or 50, and I did it in both. The last 90, uh, 50 minute presentation, 
I told my entire signature story in two minutes and 38 seconds. In the 10 minute, I did the same thing. And I told the whole story. Like the whole story is in there. So that's your writing skill. That is a high end writing skill and you can get there. It takes work, crafting, training, and you can get your story, your signature story to that. We cannot parade our story around forever. We have to have more to offer, okay? So at a certain point when you know you're walked through your story, you're ready to stand on your story, then you need to have the sub stories. So no matter what my um, presenting time is, two minutes and 38 se seconds is my signature story. The money is in the training. It is in the, the money's in the training from the front of the stage and it is in your, in your business model, okay? So I've got three sub stories. I'm going to share a story. And that story that's in sub story number one is going to be about my bigger story, but done in a way that's related directly to what I'm training. Okay. So I train, for those of you who um, don't know what I do, I train how to make significant transformation in your life, your love, and your business by connecting the all the concepts of the power of thinking, positive mindset, visualization with neural pathways, visual, auditory, and tactile. So how to use the brain and the mind to work together and imprint what you're believing to be your truth, okay? So that's essentially what I do. So then I need to take that story. My signature story is the example that I am really good at that. So then I take that first sub-story, so write sub-story number one down. I pick one training topic from my training program that I'm going to highlight in there without telling them I'm doing it. Remember, this is strategic storytelling, strategic seeding, strategic harvesting that's going to come up, okay? So I'm going to tell them uh, through my story by sharing an element of my story connected directly to one of the elements of my training program and how my product will transform you. It's the first time I'm going to mention their product, my product in a subtle way. You must be a student of your own program. Okay, so I'm going to show how I use this one step. I have 10 steps in my mindset training program. So I'll take one element of one of those 10 steps. I'll relate it to the part, another part of my story. And that's the first subtle mentioning of the product. And I'm giving them the result of the transformation I got. And that they can receive too. Very subtle. Choose your adjectives correctly. Okay, stay grounded and stay centered. You're not selling, you're sharing a story. If your program is good, then you need to be an example of it. If you're not too clear on that yet, maybe you can share an example of a client. But I would rather right now you show how it changed you, transformed you. Sub story number two. You got to get the story you're going to use, the purpose for telling this story, and which training topic you're going to attach to this. You're seeding every sentence and word. Now, when I get all the way through this process, I want you to go back in and listen to this recorded call, and you will see how I'm taking you along on a story here today, too. Okay? So you're going to seed carefully. You're going to make sure they have that takeaway from this story and then you're going to have your second mention of your product a little bit more clear how this product has transformed others first story transformed you second story transformed others and the result in the transformation that they will receive okay 
You don't have to tell them this is the result of the transformation they're going to receive. You're going to talk about it in a different way. Okay, this is very strategic selling. We're not telling them what they're going to do. You pick the right story to explain it, the right training topic, and how, you know, Betty Ann, um, this happened for her. So story telling, story selling, okay? Sub story number three. You see how we're just ramping it up, tiny wee little bit. And I mean wee little bit, okay? So your story, another part of your story you're going to put in there. Decide what the purpose of this story is going to be and what is the next training topic. So I have 10 steps in my, in my mindset program. So, you know, I'm going to pick key elements out of each one of those steps. There's, there's all kinds of subtext, sub stories, sub training in there. But I need them to really get what I'm talking about. So I'm going to pick the entire step. I'm going to seed the storytelling. I'm going to seed the story selling. I'm going to make sure they're very clear on what the takeaway is without telling them. So it should be shown through your story and the result that others are going to get. Okay. So I want to just right here mention a couple uh story um, sharing techniques. Um, you have to pick the one that's authentic to you. You have to, I'm gonna, before I say the words, I think I'll tell you the actions. People will not remember what you say, they will remember what you did. So I have a couple signature moves. They will remember when I'm talking about bringing the paddles down on top of me, just like that they will remember that. That will trigger, oh yeah, Colleen's the one that, oh yeah, got it. They'll remember a couple other moves I, I did in my signature two minutes and 38 cent, uh, second story that they will connect to that. So when they see my face on Facebook, that move reminds them, oh yeah, she's the one with that story. And oh yeah, she's the queen of the mindset shift, right? So important seating, okay? And it can't look like you staged it. It's really got to be an element. I've seen somebody do it like a whoosh, right? And I and heard someone say, oh, he's the guy that does that. It reminded them, he's, to me, he's the king of presence. He teaches presence for speakers, okay? So you got to create a couple of those. The same with your wording. So you don't need to say it in your signature story. So in full disclosure, mine is predictable. I seed that thing, okay? Um, it's predictable I'm going to, to make it through my signature story. When I start talking about substory one, they start to feel that what I do is predictable for my own results. Story number, substory number two and three, I just amp that up a tiny bit so that they can see if they work with me, they will, it is predictable, they will get the results they want because I've just proven that it's predictable I get my own results. So I tested that word, I want you to test your word. Joe used in absence of social proof, I believe, is, is well, one of the ones that she recently used. As soon as she said it this time, I knew where her sister was going with that. She, she did, you didn't need to seed it too much. And then it just landed in on the clothes, right? So I'll show you how that worked for me too. Predictable is my word, right? Because it is true. And they believed it because I've shown them the results of me and others that if they work with me and do this program, their results are as predictable as mine, and mine results are unbelievable, okay? And so by the time we're starting to move towards the closing story, the offer story, they're already 
they've had examples and they are believing in it okay so let's talk about closing story so you've had signature story three sub stories with training okay money's in the training because after something you're enrolling them in has to do with a product and a lot of us um, storytellers speakers trainers um, we got to train that's where the money is that's where the sustainability is not just speaking from the front of the room okay so I think I said before, 25% of your time at the very most should be your signature story. 50% needs to be your sub stories and 25% your closing and then your offer. Do not move off these percentages. That's where the disconnects happening between you and the audience. Okay. So, Here's the closing story elements. There's many, but I can get, I'm looking at the time here. Okay, good, good. I really want to make sure you get this, okay? What happens when people work with you? So I seeded my whole, all my stories, subtle adjectives, great examples, kicked it up through each story, tiny bit. They are knowing that there's, there's, a, there's a system of how I did this, right? And that's what I created. I went out first and just told my story for a few times, sold my book. And then my audience told me what they wanted from me. That's the other key. I did not build it and they came. I told my story and I listened. And they told me what they wanted from me. So what they told me was, is they wanted the how. How did I do this? And so that's the training. So there's the money, honey. That's the training, right? So that's what you all want to do. So by time I'm ready to step into the closing. Now, I'm not changing my voice tone. I'm not having any micro expressions. I'm not having that weirdness, that awkwardness of, oh my gosh, no. And everybody is like, she's making an offer. They're not feeling that right now, but I know back of my head where I'm at in the sales process, front of my presentation is, I'm doing a huge disservice if I don't share with you how I did this and what they can expect if they do this work. Okay, so closing offer story. So what I'm thinking in the back of my head is what happens to the people that work with me, right? So now I'm harvesting. So I've done this great little, um, story sharing the audience is co-creating they're getting what i'm delivering and now i need to tell them and start recapping everything by saying to them what i'm doing so in my story i say to them i tell them who i am if they haven't quite figured it out i kind of boil it down and i say i climb big mountains I get to the top of big goals, big stairs. My branding is, is stairs and I get to the top. So by then they totally are buying and understanding. I get to the top of big goals. I don't understand little goals. Like I only know big goals. Now I have, I have seated that thing all the way along that they actually know it's true. They have the proof. I have pictures, they have data, they have information, they have training that that is true. I get to the top of whatever I do and I only resonate with big goals, not a little step. Okay. So they're believing that. So that's authentic. That's been seated. That's been proven through all the story and the sub stories. Okay. So I need to show them how it will be predictable. There's my keyword. You guys got to find your own for them when they work with me to get there. Okay. So you can put a little story in there. Okay. Now in the 10 minute one, I didn't have time to do that, but I didn't need to do that. I know I seeded those other sub stories. So, so, um, you know, great tip is I took my 50 minute presentation, I had it videoed, that made it extremely easy, a plug to get in your, your 
self video from the front of the room. I was able to look at what I did in that 50 minute. I knew what my close rates were. I could see the um, things I needed to work on and pull out. Um, some of the, whether it was slang or personal expression or, and or nervousness and pull those out, pull those slides out if, if you were doing a PowerPoint and just put in the key critical ones for the 10 minute. So I was able to see how to do that by videoing that. So then I was able to go, okay, I got one minute on my offer story when I was doing a 10 minute. When I was doing a 50 minute, you know, maybe I had five, 10 minutes. So then I got to put a story in there. But remember on the 10 minute, I didn't have the time. So I had to make sure I chose wisely what I said, not waste any time on any other side comments, not be fast or speedy, be so grounded, okay? Really important uh, in, so that when I got to the offer story, I had it timed, I knew it was a minute. So I had to really make sure predictable was planted all the way through there. And essentially then in the 10 minute, all, all I had to say is, it's predictable I'm getting to the top of my next goal. It's predictable if you work with me, so are you. Clear. So yes, I came in, landed, right direct. No, you know, filling, puffery, dismissing. Oh my gosh, I'm making an offer, weirdness. I'm pretty direct anyway. So if I was anything but that, that wouldn't be authentic to those people, right? And also, by then, I got to tell you, the crowd is sift and sorted. I want to work with her. She gets shit done. I want to work with them. They're going to coddle me. Not me, right? I'm clear on that. And so the great thing is I really attract the action takers. So then I just landed that. It's predictable if you work with me, okay? So... Let's talk about offer so we get this part in, okay? So we've got the closing story. Now we're moving into the offer. So then the offer is really short because you seeded this thing th through the whole way. You got clear and said, okay, this is, you know, I want you to work with me if you want to work with me. In a 50 minutes, sometimes I've said I'm not for everyone. And then I laugh, you know, because humor and slightly sassy is my way. I've said, okay, please, no whiners and complainers. It doesn't work. Well, guess what? The audience laughs, but they already know that. They're already like, I can't work with her because there's no excuses. She's an action taker. But I, I'm able to do that because I know I don't enjoy working in this other element. I enjoy working with action takers. I have, you know, great empathy and sympathy, but I have in the front of the room and it is a closing story uh, method and I'm not for everyone. So you're pulling back on the sale. You see what I'm doing? And that makes people want you more. Just think of dating. This isn't any different than dating, right? You're walking by the guy that wants to date you, date you, date, and you're like, yeah, I can't talk to you. Who chases you more? That guy, right? You're in there trying to be date everybody. It's a perfect analogy. I used it in interviewing um, with men when I would say to them, okay, you just got asked to the prom, right? A dating analogy works. So if you're just pulling back the sale a little bit, okay, like I'm not for everyone. I'm for, you can say it, or if you've done a great job, they totally get it. They get who you're for and they get if they're them, right? So really important to do that. Okay, so here's how it goes from the offer. So you've done that, said it's predictable, and then I'm gonna move in the offer, okay? And this is how simple it is, whether it was a 10 minute or the 50 minute. I've got the sheets on the table, one product, one offer, one audience, nothing else. You have a website, you have a table, they can go back and see other things you're doing, but I even want you to hesitate on showing them too much, okay? Um, I ask them to put their name on the registration form, okay? 
So they're taking ownership right then and there. Now, re remember, I'm the brain person and I'm the power of positive thinking, connecting them together. So I know to use this, this is a technique that works. You guys got different topics. Go ahead and use this, okay? Name on the registration form. It actually is getting them to claim that form, okay? Okay, now for me, because of what I teach, I say to them, write your next big goal down beside it. They write it. I tell them to look at it, visualize it, say it in their head, see themselves achieving it. Now, those are part of my training stories because that's some of the techniques I start telling them. I even call it out from the front of the, off, uh, the room and tell them what I'm doing. I'm saying, so this, you guys now know, this is a neural brain thing we're doing here. I want you claiming your goal next to your name. But the smart thing is I had them do it on my registration form, not on their notebook. So you guys get what I'm doing here. I know you do. Okay. Now, then the money comes on, and this is what I want you to do. You have your full price. Let's just take 12 for 12 because everybody that's going to listen to this is 12 for 12. I'll take uh, $397. They see that written down. They see an outline of what my program is, the 10 steps, the name of it. So they're seeing it. I don't need to tell them, okay? They look at it. So I need to make sure that, that they would buy that for $397, right? So don't do the reverse thing, okay? So I say to them, so this is step number two, okay? Here's the thing. I'm going to move into the offer. $397. Can you cross that off and beside it write 297? Everybody's like, oh, deal. I'm not telling them they're getting the deal. Quit using those words. Here's your bonus. Here's your free. Stop it. Okay, we're doing. We're not telling. So right now they're thinking, oh, 297. Well, that's nice. And then I said, 12 for 12, write 197, circle it. Okay. Could be 97, 147, you know, figure out the right pricing for you. Okay. Circle it. Okay. So I've, I've, I've done different price points. I'm about to do a different one when I um, go back through cities I've already been before. Okay. Because I've, I've added some things to my program. So my price is about to change. Um, but I did that with a 97 offer to 12 for 12. Right, so I wanted to see what that looked like, what that close rate was when they saw 397. Um, I think it was one uh, in Phoenix, it was 147, and 12 for 12 got it for 97. Okay, so you're thinking, uh, uh devaluing, mm, no, not okay. So I would say the final 12 for 12 price, circle that. And you could see the, uh, oh my gosh, she's going to give this to me, right? It went to that place. It didn't go to the devaluing. And then I said, and this is me because this is the way I am and this is authentic. This is my gift to you. I know because the results are predictable to me and for my life and everything I've accomplished, that if you do this, you will get all your other goals. Without it, you'll just continue to do what you're doing. With it, it's predictable you're going to move forward. Without it, it'll be the same next week and in six weeks. I want you to succeed. Now, uh, uh, the last one, I, I said, well, you'll be nuts if you don't take it. Like I said that for the front of the stage, but that's me. So I did the whole thing and the right thing, a little bit of my sassy humor, because that's me. And then there was like $97. And I looked at him and went, I know, you'd be nuts if you don't take it. So do you see what I said and did there? It was truly my own self. But okay, you're in the room. You know, our audience is in the room. And we've got to get really good at it because there's another thing I feel too, quite frankly, enough with not coming in the room and not buying something from somebody, right? 
right? So do you see all the things that can line up for, and you know, I can say something so direct, but I can just say, you guys got to do this. Like, you, you must. So, you know, for Joe's group, I'm giving you this. So here's the thing. You guys all be careful with the words that you're using, that you're not all using the same words that I'm just training you on, okay? Um, because I've seen that happen, and what ends up happening is people in the room turn and look at me, right? They look at me, or they'll go, oh, I know that I've heard Colleen speak, or that's Joe's word. Find the words that are right for you, but it's the same intention, and it will happen the same way for you if you choose the things that, land with your audience and they're true to you, right? Because if you use predictable, everybody will know you came from this training, right? Or if you use your nuts or if you use, oh my gosh, I just want everybody in Joe's group to have this. This is my gift to you because Joe's so wonderful, that sort of thing. So, so everybody work on what will work, but you're using the same concept of what I'm using. Okay, so that's what we did there. They, they by being, um, I guess, you're engaged in, in, in the offer process, you get your, your audience engaged in your offer process by writing their name, crossing it out, putting down the other one, um, and then handing the registration to you. So that is, can all be done in... Mm, 45 seconds, okay? No other offers, none. This is, this is one of the deal breakers I see. They'll come over, they'll look at your table, you'll connect to them through that first product offering, right? And you'll get to know them and then you have them in your sales funnel and you're able to sell something else. So that's why you need to create a product where you can do this. This is your front piece, okay? And I can take that same product and take it into a completely different market other than 12 for 12. And the killer offer is going to be, you know, 297, right? So right audience, right offer, right? Know, know why you're doing. So those are most of the key points of what I want to talk about today. But, you know, I think you can understand that it's important to understand the whole process, um, create the story that allows you to seed this thing the right way. How do you create those sub stories? That's really important. The mindset of the speaker, your selling confidence, your body language, um, how you move, that physicality is all neuroscience how to express your story. Like for instance, I learn my story, I rehearse, I act, I want you guys thinking more like a pro versus an amateur. Think how much stage performers have to practice their story. And you rehearse and then I want you to imprint on your body that story. Your, your, your body when you learn how to do this neural brain um, uh, power of thinking, conscious mind, non-conscious mind together. When you learn how to do that, then you can imprint your story on your body at a cellular level, the delivery of that story. Then you let it go. And then when you walk on the stage and you have staged that thing correctly and you know the words you're using, the words trigger when I walk over there and I do something, it triggers where I'm at in that story. So then it looks organic and not practiced. And that's the secret sauce in learning how to deliver it at this really calm, grounded level is learning how to imprint the story. Then you walk away from it and you walk in the room and boom, you trigger. And then you walk over here. Then you say that word. So there's no memorization that's ever coming out to that audience like you're training at a corporate function, you are co-creating with your audience, you're seeding, you're landing, you're locating, you're seeding the clothes, and it's the body that starts to tell you so there's no disconnect. And then you can really be with the audience while you're doing all that. 
And so that's the bigger pr picture of doing it. And the selling confidence will come from there. And yes, there is a sales process that you must know how to get in the front of the right audience, how to see where your individual audience member is. So before I kick this back to Joe, I want to talk about off stage selling. So your front of stage, on the stage selling is what we did, just um, talked about. Um, your on stage selling starts the moment you go in the room, the moment you're at an event. You should know who everybody is in the room and you should start doing what I call recon. You need to do some research on who's in the room, who is the right uh, client for you, so when I go in the room, uh, you know, like Joe's rooms, there's a lot of opportunity for me to know who's in there. I'm watching them speak. I might be watching them in a mastermind. There might be a mini presentation. I am very intuitive. I mean, I was a, 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 a headhunter and a career coach for many years. So I'm very in, intuitive. But you guys, I think, are all heart-centered. Dial into this, Okay. This is the behind the curtain things. I'm sharing with you the truth. You get your list out and you write down some trigger things that remind you and you start sifting and sorting who's at the top of the list. Closing this, sure, close first, down, down, down. Not my customer, not my customer. Oh, this will be hard. You make sure that you know who's there, okay? And, and because sometimes that off the stage closing it's busy in there and all the other speakers are having their moment and they got to do their thing and you have to respect that. So all of a sudden you thought you had the whole next day to engage one-on-one -on -one with those customers or allow people to talk to you. I don't stand at my table. Okay. I'm working the crowd, working the room. I'm not expecting anybody to come to me. Um, you know, you've got to go out there and make the connection and that will increase your enrollment by probably 75%. And you sift and sort, oh my gosh, no, it's her I need to get to. I can feel it. I can hear what she's saying. She gets to the top. I got to go over and talk to her and get to know her one-on-one, -on -one, not just from the front of the room and boom, sale, right? Then over here, over there. Um, off stage selling you'll make um, by connecting. So here's the other thing. Uh, don't make it look like you're selling. Make like it is that you're finding out how um, your program can help them. How can I help you? So, so same thing. Delivery up here, but don't be foolish back here. Know where you're at. Here's the other tip. As you all know, the ones that aren't going to buy from you want to take all your time. So that's why I'm saying to you, make sure you know where you're at with everyone and who is the customer in the room that's going to resonate with you best. You're going to get the best results from them, the best testimonial. You're going to enjoy working with them. And be careful of the time sucker that wants all your free information. We've all been there. It exhausts you. It changes your, your energy. So I want you to be really cognizant of that. So you're out, you're engaging. And if you pick the right way with the right person, then you're, you're enrolling. So that's why you must track your numbers. You must test what you're saying, how you're doing, you must measure, and then you will know what your results are. It can be as simple as that the next time you don't use that sentence, I bet your sales clothes go down. That's how, how important it is for you to watch how your words are landing by enrolling. And then you're going over and just, how can I serve you? So here I'll give a great example. I, I knew this person would, would buy. And so in a way, she kind of went down towards the end of the list, right? Because I knew the engagement needed to happen with the other people. I'm just not wanting to be up there just being a pretty face, telling a ridiculous story that's, right? Not interested in that. I believe that I need to serve and people will move forward. So that means I need to be comfortable with, with selling, okay? You can't just share uh, women audiences. It's, it's very different from male audiences. So you have to bring them along and help them move through their, their barriers. So I had this one person who I knew was a sale, 
but I knew to put her towards the end. And then as the day kind of went on, I saw some other things about this person, but I still chose that I had to engage with these other people first who didn't really know me. And then there came a moment where I thought, oh, her circumstances, there's more to her circumstances, right? And so then very quickly towards the end, when time is really close and practically packing up and leaving the room, everybody, I just, all I had to say was, how can I help you? Boom, right now, credit card out, sale made, okay? So, so it, it, it's just how you do that. You have to be so present in the room. And one of the easiest distractions when we're a speaker is our uncomfortableness. We're trying to remember a story. You know, our dog might have died yesterday. A family member might have died. And let me tell you, I've had all of that, right? Um, there's so much going on that it's so easy in our own head, right? So much going on. Uh, we've got to release. We've got to get present in the room. There's great techniques of how to do that. And then it could, can be as simple as that final one. How can I, can I help you? What can I do for you? It's not giving the pro program away for free because I made a killer offer, right? So it, it is all that. So I think that's um, – how are we doing here, Joe? Yeah, I think that's enough uh, for your audience for now. Um, I do want to mention that uh, Joe came to me to serve her 12 for 12 speakers, okay? And I, I have this knowledge. So I'm putting this together in a customized way for the heart-centered 12 for 12 speakers. So I want to – give you two chances of, of really jumping into this okay joe's going to put the powerpoint up there it'll give you the framework it'll tell you what's going on in the first level of speak to sell the kickstarter program you'll be able to see all that um, but for edmonton speakers uh, and the speakers that are going to be speaking on the island i understand the urgency to learn this so you can convert more um, if you choose to, to do this and you want this information, then I will be there at both those events. I'm now going to Edmonton. I, I just uh, found out that I'll be at the Edmonton event. Um, so that's awesome. I will give you a half hour to work on that closing offer story with you and me, okay? And so I'll, I'll be able to do that for you before you speak for both group of speakers going to the island and going to Edmonton. The other thing is, because um, I'm customizing this for you guys, um, my offer to you is $297 on that first level uh, program instead of $397. You will be in the airplane while I'm flying it. Okay, so here's the cool thing, because I know about me. I'm pulling back the whole curtain. I'm giving you everything I do know, all the trainings I've gotten to do this, including all my 32-year sales process that I teach people how to um, close deals with customers. Um, you're going to get what I call, you know, the MTB unplugged version. You're going to get me on a video as I am building this program for you guys. Then it's gonna to go to the video expert, it's gonna get edited, it's gonna turn into a webinar with a workbook, but stuff will be edited out because of time, and then you know the price will go up. But you can work with me, you don't have to be with me live on the recorded calls, but I'm gonna record my videos of me uh, going through every set of that first Kickstarter program uh, for 297. So essentially, between Monday the 6th and Friday, I believe the 10th, I'm building that whole program, and you'll get the delivery on that unedited, unfiltered, unplugged, which will be a lot of cool information. And if you need this thing right away to increase your sales, that's a great offer. Or you can wait uh, for that product to launch probably end of April, all neat and tidy and shiny and sparkly. Uh, but the information will, it'll be the same. It'll just be streamlined, tight, or you can get me unfiltered, unedited, unplugged. Okay. 
Thank you. Well, thank you. And I, we're going to open it up for anybody who stays with us and has some um, questions as well. But uh, when I asked Colleen to do this, because I've consistently seen it, she definitely delivers. And, and it's such a, it's so hard for me to watch people get up on stage and deliver with their, with their hearts. They're delivering. I mean, Teresa, you're the first one in the queue right now. So just, you know, Teresa's just written a book. It's gone off for reviews right now. It's, it's going to launch. And it's, it's tough. And Barbara, you know this. It's tough to make. You can't make a living off the book by itself. You can build, right? You can build around that. So what hurts, what it, it frustrates me because I know what you're going through. And because we do collaborative events and you're all attracting your people to come to these things, it's important to me that one, they get to see your influence in the room. And that plays, that, that's something Colleen hasn't even addressed yet. You know, um, I asked her to kind of give us the, how do we make that move, get people started? And I'm going to be sending you all the PowerPoint just because I don't know how to put it up in here properly. And I don't want to lose you guys, I'm afraid. So I will be sending that out. But, you know, it's so hard to see people delivering with such passion. And they, I know every one of us, including myself, wants to serve. The sales thing is a tough thing for people because we get in our head only we forget that we're still there to serve and, and Colleen I love that you were talking about that because we have a business and we have to make money there's just it doesn't matter how much wonderful we're doing if there's no money coming and we can't continue doing it so this is why I was so adamant about doing this that's why I basically I said to Colleen I think it was two weeks ago we talked and I said you know what there's a big element missing here there's conversions not happening and you do it consistently. I do it similar but different, but I want to just really touch on something. There's so much you, that was so rich, Colleen, so much shared. But one thing you really talked about, or you were talking about was words, with actions. And I 100% agree because there's been people that have said, oh, I'm teaching frock off somewhere else. I'm like, how can you teach it? You don't even know it. So, you know, it's so important to use your own words to imprint with your own you know, whatever that is, to leave that impression because people remember me primarily because of Frock Off and the Declaration, my favorite. They'll remember other things. And yes, I all, and I do talk about saying yes in the absence of proof. And you don't know what's going to happen. So I really, I appreciate that. And so when we talked, I just said, Colleen, can you do this? And then in true form, she's like, okay, well, how much time do I have? I said, we all have a couple of weeks to get it together. We were joking about this. It became that when I call you, by the way, and I say, hey, Barbara, Teresa, whoever, can you just do this? Can you just do this whole thing? Like, I was not small, by the way, but I want, I want you to bring your brilliance to this group because this group is, well, obviously near and dear to my heart. But more importantly, I want to... I want to show that we do. I know how to do all my own stuff, and I know how to help other people. But then if we get that stage moment, and if we cr not crash and burn, but literally we don't make the conversion, we've lost a huge opportunity. I remember hearing Rick Hansen. I was at a uh, Canadian Professional Speakers Association uh, seminar, like a conference. And Rick Hansen, Peter Leg, and oh, my goodness, he's the guy that owns a big magazine, Peter, Peter Light, he said, when you get on the stage, it is your responsibility to change people, to, it, you know, for me, it's, I, think, I call it disrupting, disrupting their norm, you know, getting them out of their norm, getting them in the room and helping them to understand how we can make that transition. So it's, you know, they said this and I'll never forget, I remember thinking, when they, when the three of them said it, I thought, I can go home right now because I have learned exactly what I need to learn. I was there for three full days, but those are the words I remember. I don't remember a, a lot of the other stuff. I did meet two amazing women I've had the privilege of still working with today. But they, those, that statement was so impactful. And they said it's not just about making people feel good. It's about transforming their life with those you're supposed to serve. So we tend to stay away from the sales conversation, but the truth is without sales, we can't stay in business. So, so that's that, and I will be sending that out. But I just want to 
to, um, invite you all to unmute. And if you have any specific questions, we'll stay on for another, I would say, 10, 10 minutes or so. Just if, And, you know, if you have to go, I completely understand, but I wanted to open it up. So please feel free to unmute and just uh, try in. Oh, well, I'll start. Thanks, Colleen and Joe, for, for the great information. I mean, I am so new to this, as Joe knows, and I haven't, don't think I've developed any bad habits yet. I haven't had my first time completely on stage. So this gives me a lot of great information to start building properly. Mm -hmm. And I really do appreciate that. And as you mentioned, you know, to have your, your thing, your signature, um, when I talk about my car accident, for example, and how, you know, that impacted my life and survived and all this, I always talk about having the death grip on the steering wheel. Mm -hmm. so, so, so this, yes. right? Absolutely. And I was like this when it happened. So, you know, a lot of people can, you know, I just got the feeling again, a lot of people could probably relate to something happening when you're driving and the fear that it, you know, it, 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 uh, it creates in you. So, so, so signature move, right? Mm -hmm. It's in the hands, take it off the face, right? Okay. I'm watching you right now. So I'm giving, you know, giving you some critique. Okay. Right? Signature move. You don't take the, the energy of it anymore. You let them have it because then they're remembering every time they've had a near miss or had an accident, right? You're not taking all their energy. You're allowing them to have it. This did it for them, right? And then you can say, you can say the words attached to it. Do you get where I'm going with that? Yeah, because as soon as I said it and did it, I felt the energy again. Yeah. And the expression probably was all over my face. So yeah. you're right. Yes. Yeah. The death grip on the steering wheel. Yeah. 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 There. Death grip. That. And then no more expression from yourself as you, as you allow them to have their memory. And then you're moving into the next place where you're landing into their life. That was a landing moment. Okay. okay. So pause. Basically. Was, you know what? That was very powerful because. It took no time. It took no time. You only had, you said something, you put your hand, and then, you, then you're going to, so it just shows, because often people over explain, and then people just get lost in it. They get lost, because it's, it's not our job to do self-therapy from the front of the room. Our mm -hmm. job is to provide a service, and it's just like when books have been written, we've all read a self-published book, there's really more of somebody's journal or diary, and if it's put that way, that's fine. But don't tell me it's a self-help book when it's really your self-help book. That's a, mm -hmm. a whole different thing. So what Colleen just demonstrated is how quickly, you know, frock off takes, you know, not even a second to say. So it, it, those things, this isn't the rah-rah of anybody. It's about acknowledging and taking that, those opportunities to train. So thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah, anyone, thank you. Anyone else have any questions? I have to run now, ladies. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Okay, we'll I have a quick question. Um, do you ever use different signature stories for different audiences? Great question. Okay, yeah, great question. Okay, my big play is um, uh, speaking my signature story to my true market is medical trauma workers. Uh, brain injured athletes, wounded warriors. Okay, so just think about that for a second. Whereas in Joe's group, I'm really marketing to second act women. And how do you create the life you imagine? Those are my taglines. Um, use and then using my system, right, which is neural pathways and the power of the mind. Okay. So just think right now, seems fundamentally different, same signature story, okay? Sub stories are going to change. So sub stories in Joe's market then are, are different or in the, let's call it the personal growth market, okay? Sub stories in the medical trauma, wounded warriors, um, 
Uh, if I'm speaking in front of the medical group, I'm going to talk about what was going on in ICU and ER, those stories. So I can build those plug and plate and, and attach them into the signature story. Okay. Yeah. So my brand is built on my, my book, my signature story and my transformation. So that is going to stay, stay the same because it's the place where I relate to people, even in the second act women market and, and trauma market, believe it or not, it's where I relate. And here's the other interesting piece of that is my entry level program in Joe's is the same as it is in the trauma wounded warrior athlete world, different wording, different languaging that resonates with them, but it's the same steps. A little more detail over here because their issues are even more and they really need to know it, right? So, so plug and play, right? And you can do it so that right audience, right offer, Here's your signature story, and you've got maybe six to go, right? Do your first three that you think will be the sub-stories that will really fit in there, right? And offer story should be the same. Offer process will be the same, different amount, different product. But then you can plug in these other stories. Don't have a whole bunch. I can think of speakers that every time they're on the stage, they – and I've seen them a lot, they have a phenomenal story, but they're changing their sub stories and their offer, and then it's their book coach, then they're an image coach, and then they're motivational, all these things. And, you know, we're in this global online community where we get known, and you wanna be known for one thing, not everything, one thing. So when somebody says that word, they think about you, Barbara. Right. So when people say, uh, you know, you are what you think people think about me or they say, you know, mindset, boom, everybody looks at me, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what you want. So be careful about how many plug and plays you have, mm -hmm. right? Uh, depending on your minutes, you can shorten them, right? Like at the, the 10 minute, obviously, my sub stories were uh, collectively, I actually put them all together in a minute and a half. So, so but I had the framework. So it made it really easy for me to go narrow from a 50 minute presentation. So work on the first killer th sub stories and then add to it. And that way you can just switch it out. Otherwise we're always in creation and we need to be in more execution stages. Yeah, I agree. Great. But the main signature story is the same. You're saying same two minutes, 38 seconds. Right. They but I mean, for both audiences, different audiences, yes. so sub stories that you adapt. The sub stories will be different. So just right. I use that example because you all know the market we're in with Joe's group and anything that's like that, how right. different that is from head trauma, PTSD, wounded warriors, brain injured athletes. Yeah. Like you're thinking right now, how different can that be? But my transformational training program, 10 steps, it's actually the same, right? I have, I have heavier language over there. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why my signature story can stay the same, but it has to because my brand is, is built on me. It, it is on me. There, there's a, um, you know, it's our tendency to have all this other thing and be innovative and creative. I get that. I totally do. But, but we got to put a chain link fence around us so we're known for one thing. Right. Thank you. Thank you. That was a great. And thanks for a great presentation. That was. A oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, um, I do want to say just to make sure we get this recorded. If you're interested in that uh, killer offer where I'm um, building the program next week, send me a Facebook message and I'll get you the registration. Um, Pauline, uh, is it okay yes. if I post that right in the Facebook group? Yes. Well? Yeah. So I'll just yeah. post the actual attachment right in there until yeah yeah but i will be I, this is being recorded right now and i will upload it but i just want to ask that yes yeah and i wanted to um just we haven't even had a chance to say hi to sherry i see you there so hi, hi everybody hi, sorry i um i was listening in the background i i'm on a deadline for a bunch of stuff so i had to multitask but colleen i just have to say that i am so proud of you like 
Wow. I saw the fitting the very first time you ever got up on a stage and to see you now present this program is amazing. And I am, I, I just want love to you. Love, love, love. Oh, thank you. Yes. Thank you. Everything so that you were talking about was, um, I was, I was lucky enough. I got that kind of training, uh, earlier on in my career. And so I want to, you know, I'm glad this is being recorded because I want to say to people, I spent thousands and thousands of dollars yeah. <laughs> for what you are offering those people for 12 for 12 right now is a major, huge gift. Mm -hmm. uh, and so anybody that's watching this that has, um, that knows what their signature story and don't know how to close and sell at the end of their speeches, uh, everything that you said was point on. And Barbara, even just that last question that you asked about, um, do I need two versions of my story? And I was smiling inside because I was thinking, I also depend on who I talk to. If I'm talking to entrepreneurs mm -hmm. or if I'm talking to just, you know, people that aren't in business, mm -hmm. I, my signature story is the same, but I definitely, it's more business oriented about how your money mindset is in your business or how your money mindset is in your personal life. They're same stuff, but it's definitely, I, I do it different. So, I liked how you explained that because I was like, awesome. I'm getting that one right. <laughs> yeah, and I, I want to further on that because we talked about the killer offer when I offered it for 97. And then, you know, why am I doing what I'm doing right now for 12 for 12? So it's a couple things, right? It's my way to give back to Joe. And, you know, I've owned my own business for 30 years. And so there's, you know, there's struggle, there's striving. It's really, I'm in the striving group where I offer this to you guys. You're striving towards your goal and I can share that. And, and one of the other reasons I can do that now is because I know where my bigger game is playing out and that, that's allowing me to do this. And so, so then how do you position it so people don't undervalue it, right? It's the result. So you got to measure your numbers and you got to be able to say, you know, here's what they are. Uh, I went and spoke here. I didn't sell one program or I sold 10, but there, you need to know your numbers. Mm -hmm. And so um, that will tell you that you need to invest more. Yes, I did invest in myself uh, a lot of training to do this and, and, and certainly from when Sherry saw me speak to, to now. Um, yeah, lots and lots of, of work and training and, and effort. But nobody else is getting this offer in this package this way. And you're nuts if you don't take it. <laughs> yeah, I, that, that's, all, that's all I was going to second was. Yeah. Your signature line. And like, you're nuts if you don't take it. <laughs> just, I love just go it. click. Click the pay now button. Just do it now. Don't even go past. Don't pass. Hey, uh, hey, I'm just bringing the money to you, honey. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know what? It's just consistently true. It's consistently true. And, you know, as we started out this call, um, I'm just going to wrap up from a, just from a recording standpoint. As we started, the biggest concern I've been having is all of us, 12 for 12 is premier, it's heart-centered people that are working and living their blessing. But the problem is if you're not earning money, you can't live your blessing. And this this whole the whole conversation around sales for so many people is so uncomfortable. And yet you cannot serve if you don't make money. And uh, Colleen, thank you for bringing up the numbers thing. Uh, you know, Sherry, I've seen you, I mean, you work in, Sherry, you live in the world of numbers, so you understand. But we often, we are so excited to share our message that we don't track. We're just so glad to be on that stage with Sherry because we love the people. We love them so much. And that's true. We do. We love them so much. We want to do, we want to do good work and we're, we're driven and oh my goodness, we could, we could change the world, but not if we're not earning money. So, you know, that's why this was so important. So I'm, I'm just going to, I'm not going to end, if you, if you guys want to stay on a little longer, we can, but I'm going to end the recording right now. And I want to say to you, those of you watching the recording, seriously, you're nuts. How do I say it? You're nuts. <laughs> um, 
So for those of you again, we're going to end the recording right now. If you're not here, well, you're missing out. But anyway, we'll see you soon.